Welcome to the summit. Thanks for stopping by today. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams on the Midwest Sports.net YouTube channel. And today on the summit, we get to visit with the new head coach of the Lion Scots, Coach Chris Douglas. And coach, you're the fourth coach in this season or in the school's young history. Congratulations on the new opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, we're we're excited about it. And I say we, I, my family, uh, I've got uh, a brood at home and and they're all kind of anxious to to get to the next adventure is what we've been calling it. I understand. Well, listen, should be a good adventure. You take over a program that was seven and three last season. That's the best record in program history. And it, it looks like you, you've got uh, something that's going already in the right direction. Absolutely. It's, it's definitely a departure from my last adventure uh, where we took a program that had what, not won one game in four years or had won, only won one game in four years, excuse me. And uh, so it, it's nice to be able to go somewhere where they've had a little recent success. And so I'm looking at this as how can we, instead of overhauling everything, how can we make a, a few course corrections to make it even better? It sounds like that the, we have some good players on board. Uh, obviously, we've got to get them through the rest of the semester and we got to get them through the summer. But uh, and we've got some good coaches on staff as well. So I'm, I'm looking forward to continue to work with them. It's been uh, obviously a very early start because of COVID. Thank you. Uh, but uh, and we're even hopeful that we can have a, a season, I guess, at this point still, too. But uh, we're getting ready to to spend a little bit more time with those guys as it's still pretty fresh and and just start to develop those relationships, I think, are really important. I understand. Well, I'm hoping for that season too, Coach. Don't jinx it, all right? Let's Absolutely go. not, no. <laughs> we definitely want to have that. You've spent nearly a decade at McMurray College in Illinois. But talk about your time there and then what leads you then to Batesville, Arkansas. Yeah, nearly a decade. I, I tell the story recently that I was heading home after a recruiting visit and turned the corner to the house, and it just kind of dawned on me that it's nearly been a decade that I've been here. I've been coaching 26 years, 16 of those as a head football coach, um, mostly at the college level, a couple of years at the high school. And this is the longest I've ever been in one spot is, is nine seasons, nine years. And that's, you know, that's typical for college coaching and even high school coaching. You can kind of be a vagabond a little bit, uh, but it was, a, it's been an interesting ride here. As I touched on, we inherited a program that was probably the worst in the nation at the time that I got it. Um, they had only won one game in four years. The team GPA was a 2.14 uh, the first semester I was here. That's the average GPA for that semester, and the cumulative was a 2.22. That's not very good if you're not familiar with grade point averages and higher education. Uh, but over time, and it took us a long while. I mean, it took us four years to finally get over the hump and get our first winning season. But then since then, we've won 35 games. Uh, we finished second in our conference three out of the four years, finished third uh, one year. So we've done a lot of good, great things. And, and most importantly, we've, we've brought in great young men. We've helped develop them. They've had an opportunity to graduate, and they're going on and doing great things now. So we're very proud of the work that we've done. But uh, it's time to move on. wasn't necessarily my decision. Uh, I don't know if this is something you're going to touch on, but uh, our school is closing. Uh, at the end of the spring semester, McMurray College will no longer exist as a, a college or a, an institution of higher education. And so a lot of us, uh, on top of myself, are, we're needing to find jobs. And I am extraordinarily blessed uh, and, and humbled to be able to jump right back into the head coaching seat when this was probably, Lyon College was probably the only head coaching job open at the time and at the college level. You know, Coach, and, and we're getting news that uh, that's not going to be the only only situation that, that is dealing with that. And so uh, with with the current uh, national situation, yeah, you're, you're right. And, and boy, what a blessing, though, because, you know, you don't you do come into a situation. The cupboard's not bare by any stretch of the imagination. You look at this really quickly, Coach, the top three producers on the ground last season were running backs. They were all freshmen. Dakota Braswell, Jaden Grant, Jalen Kitchen, all coming back as sophomores. And then Isaiah Bradford, the quarterback, uh, he's coming back after a pretty solid sophomore season, going to be a junior for you. So you, the backfield definitely seems to be in place. Absolutely. And you've got to have someone that can pull the trigger at the quarterback position for sure. 
but you better have a, a pretty decent stable of running backs. In our system, those guys are usually going to touch the ball about 50% a game. So they've got to be able to do something. And, you know, watching some film, there's a little bit of speed back there. There's a little bit of ability. So I'm, I'm a little bit jacked about that and very young on the offensive line. I started two to three uh, freshmen last year on the offensive line. That's experience. You you can't buy that experience. It's uh, That's really, really impressive that they had the success they had with so many young guys playing on the offensive line. And so I'm anxious to get my hands on it. I'm, I've been on the offensive side now for quite a while. Uh, I'll be calling the offense. So I'm kind of pumped to to put our our brand of, of offensive style on on those young guys and let them learn it and and let's see where that goes. Speaking now with Coach Chris Douglas, the new head football coach at Lyon College, and and I, here on the summit, by the way, I I would encourage you to like and share this video. Please do subscribe to the channel Midwest Sports Nets YouTube channel, Coach. I, you're exactly right, man. That you can't just even put a price on experience like that and again coming off a solid season as well one of the biggest upsets in the NAI last year I believe was Lions 18-14 upset over OUAZ and that was the only loss excuse me for the spirit in the Sooner Athletic Conference and really just about this far on the outside looking in at a playoff opportunity you were talking about coming in and, and the excitement of getting to you know see these new players talented players how, how do you keep it going in the right direction with obviously changes in style of leadership? That's funny. I just got off the phone with one of the returning players a little bit ago, and that was, that was one of the questions he asked, and it's going to be a challenge. Uh, my career has been a little bit unique. In my now being third head coaching role at the college level, I've never met my team until reporting day. I took my first head coaching role at – Southwestern College, my alma mater in Kansas, uh, my first day on campus was June 6th of 2002. <laughs> when I took the job here at McMurray, my first day on campus was June 1st of 2011. Everybody's gone in June, right. uh, particularly at small colleges. No one, We don't have summer school and everybody's sticking around to do the workouts and all that. They got to do them at home. Well, it's going to be the same case here. And of course, that's forced by COVID now. You know, I probably would have had time to meet with the team for at least a week or two before they were all going home for summer break. If I was able to get the job in a normal circumstance, <laughs> there is no normal right now. No. Uh, so I'll be like everybody else. You know, we'll be living on Zoom or some other type of, of uh, video chat uh, application on our phones and trying to teach our offense and defense and special teams teams to those guys over the summer. But we will start behind the eight ball in that we haven't had any of that preparation uh, through previous years or developing relationships. And, you know, this is great to be able to talk on the phone and be able to see each other and see body language, but it's still not quite the same as actually being in person. And so really a lot of it at the very beginning, when they get there late July, early August, will be getting everybody on the same page with our culture, with our standards, our expectations, getting to know our new coaches on staff and more importantly, our new coaches learning our players. Cause I, I'm a big believer. You can't coach your players if you don't know your players. And so th that'll be a lot of it. And then it'll be on us to not over coach our players and try to put too much in too fast, knowing that they've had no exposure to new schemes because of lack of the benefit of having no spring ball. Obviously right. we can do things through video. We can do through, things through the computer, but it's just not quite the same as actually getting out there and physically doing it. That definitely answers the question of how, how are the Zoom meetings going, because you're, you're right in, in all those aspects. Uh, I guess from a positive, it's not June, you know, so <laughs> at least uh, there, there is a, that, that's maybe a step. I don't know. Maybe a step in the right direction. You're coming into the Sooner Athletic Conference, and I know you're familiar with the NAI. The Sooner Athletic Conference, of course, beginning its third season sponsoring football. Now, the conference itself has been around for more than 40 years and has had a lot of success in a number of different sports. And I think that that football uh, will be no different as uh, the conference, you know, has its hands on that. But it has a, a number of young programs, not unlike your Lion program there, uh, as uh, I would say probably half the programs in the conference right now really still in their infancy and, and growing. How do you see this new conference since you're coming into just that it's it's new it's emerging there's great opportunities for growth it's a very broad conference 
uh, to stretch all the way from northeast Arkansas to to go all the way to the western side of Arizona, and and of course Texas, Arizona as well has great football, and Oklahoma has great football. Texas has tremendous football. Arkansas has great football. To really kind of hit the Bible Belt of football, you know, uh, to stretch through there, I think it, it's going to give. Uh, the Sooner Athletic Conference an opportunity to eventually grow into a conference that's going to be a national contender where we're not just getting maybe one school a year, but getting two and maybe even sometimes three schools from our conference into the national playoffs like like maybe the Midwest does or um, or the Heart of America occasionally does some uh, some schools like that or some conferences like that that have those opportunities just because of their clout and the strength of all the programs top to bottom. I mean, I think of the, the Heart of America and there's not a lot of weak teams in that conference. They can all play, and and they all, uh, for the most part, contend for a conference title. But you know, or half of their conference has been, or more, has been ranked in the top 25 through most seasons. Right, and and even with the two divisions, obviously you're going to see two two teams making that 16 team field. But uh, you know that that team that's either going to be the third team in or, or just on the outside looking in, obviously could probably make a run as well. I. I I think that's. I think you're right, and and I think the, that the Sooner Athletic Conference is poised to make a, a jump like that. So hopefully, with your tenure there, you'll you'll be able to to be a part of that. You know, the 2020 season is set to get underway. We hope. So we're we're looking looking for that. Your schedule looks like this, Coach. August 29th in St. Louis. It's turned into an annual out of conference uh, matchup with Missouri Baptist. Two weeks later, you are on the road again, taking on Hendricks, in-state rival, Division Three school there, and. Scots are yet to pick up a win in five matchups against the Warriors, so uh, there there is something there. You're finally back home, and it's a Sooner Conference or Sooner Athletic Conference matchup. Then third game of the season against Texas College. Have you looked that far ahead? Have you looked at the schedule yet? Very little. I, I'm trying not to look too far ahead. I, I think probably the the one I'm looking at right now is that first one at, at uh, Missouri Baptist. It will be kind of coming home a little bit. I've already talked to friends around here that say, oh, yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you in St. Louis on the 29th. And I have a lot of family in Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma City area as well. So I've already had friends that said, hey, we'll see you when you get to Langston. Uh, so I've looked a little bit ahead at that. But to be honest, there's so much to do right now, just getting a hand on where we're at with recruiting, uh, where we're at with our current roster and, and guys finishing strong academically and and continuing to work toward graduation, uh, just and just learning about Lion. I mean, there's a lot of similarities to all the schools that I've been at, but there's always differences as well. And I think the faster I can learn those differences, uh, the better. And of course, again, get a chance to learn about our coaches and learn about our players. So there'll be time, maybe in June, July, I can look a little bit deeper at those schools and that schedule. But uh, I, I've looked, I peaked ahead, but I'll, I wouldn't say I've gotten too deep into it just yet. All right. Well, I'll, I'll ask you again during that time. Hopefully we get a chance to see you at the Sooner Athletic Conference Media Day, and hopefully it's it goes as scheduled uh, right now. Coach Chris Douglas, again, thank you for taking time with us today here on the Summit, and congratulations on the new job. Success to you, sir. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Thanks again for watching the Summit here on the MidwestSports.net YouTube channel. Please do subscribe. We would appreciate that. And in the meantime, God bless you and have a great day.